Hello and welcome to the next part of the character modeling tutorial and um, I talked last time at the end about the wrinkles and how I'd play around with it and see if I can do it. So this is what I came up with and I'm kind of happy with the result even though there are a few places to fix. So the situation is going to be pretty much the same as with um, you know, the pants that we worked on. So I have already a version. Uh, I'm considering to using this one but we'll go through adding the wrinkles again uh, just so that it's in the tutorial and you know if it turns out better we're going to use that one if not we'll stick with it so I'm going to back to the version without wrinkles here and I'll show you what I did um, basically after playing around a little bit and trying to add wrinkles at uh, different places you know I just did some performance and try to get it here. I decided to um, just apply the mirror modifier and oh sorry not the solid fee, the subsurface uh, subsurf modifier. And then you might get an issue here since you changed um, the way the modifier is set up. So just quickly there's one point that you need to fix. Um, somewhere here, right down here, and then you're good to go. And once you have that, we'll go and sculpt something. But um, since we don't have mirror, I'm going to delete this entire half and mirror it again. And the reason why we applied the mirror first was because the subsurface modifier doesn't quite work if it's the other way around when applying it, at least. So now we go to sculpt mode and I like to use a few different tools. One of them is oh sorry. One of them is the sculpting uh, the, the polishing tool that you can see here. So I'm just using it to kind of um, see on this side maybe better how it's affecting it. It's just making it flat and therefore kind of creating a, a fold indirectly on this side as well and down here rather the, the um, face in the middle. So next thing after kind of doing this in some places um, I want to maybe use the crease brush to you know get a couple of things in there. Uh, you can always switch back to uh, the normal vertex modeling mode and you know, continue working on it here a little bit if you think that's necessary. But again, you're in sculpting, so it might not be, uh, you might not have to do that at all. Mm. Well, this is kind of troublesome here. Well, you have a little wrinkle down there and try to increase it. Yeah, that's good. And we'll do that all over the place. So there are many different ways. Some I, I don't even know some brushes. This one I'm just going to try out for now. And I'm hoping that, yeah, it's look kind of um, smeared this to the side with it and you get a few wrinkles. Of course, it's better to think a bit better about it and you know, go serious with it. But I noticed that I'm already being a bit lazy once again since I have it done. Who knows? Maybe it will turn out better than before. And there you go, kind of. I wonder if this goes through actually. I think it does. No, it didn't. Great. Uh, so there you have some wrinkles. I think this is actually good enough for this. Or at least you know how I did it. I mean, I'm going to still switch back to my other version, but um, this is how you do it. So quickly starting a new blender and checking, comparing uh, whether this is really. Um, you know, better or worse. 
Um, and it's kind of hard decision. Both have their qualities, both have their downsides. Oh, that's hard. I kind of like a few things on this one, but there are some some parts that I don't like as well. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> going here and adjust a few parts. If I can fix those, I'm going to take my version. Well, you know, the one that I originally made. Oh yeah, now it's pretty good. Now I'm pretty sure that I want to take the one on this side. Um, great, with that decision out of the way, let's just close the other window and not save it. Um, so here you have your code and let's continue quickly check for other things that we have to model so this one uh, pocket is still there we need to put some I think we can do the hands pretty quickly uh, so she kind of has some um, gloves fingerless gloves we can quickly do that you just select here a couple of loops around the fingers and then the a loop where you want it to finish. Then you press Control E and select loop in a region. And then you duplicate it and you separate it into a new mesh. Then you have this here and this mirror, which is a good thing. I'm going to change the material to the darker one. And that looks very good, but I'm still going to add a solid fill modifier to give this a bit of a thickness and make sure that the offset is set to zero so that we can see the thickness. And because it's a bit thicker, we will now adjust this as well, since there was a small intersection. Even here. Great. Um, also moving it to the cloth layer. I think it's pretty cool uh, to look at just the cloth alone. <laughs> Maybe the you know the code in my opinion doesn't fit in so well, but if it was just this here, I would really print this probably and <laughs> just have it as a as a small statue, just the cloth itself. It kind of looks cool. <laughs> the next thing will be the scarf, of course. Um, do we have the time? Yeah, let's just do it. I mean, there are so many parts already in this tutorial and I'm kind of getting frustrated because I have no idea how to deal with all of those. I don't want to do editing uh, on these videos. Well, because. Because it's way too much to do and I have no idea how long it would take to render. I mean, these are... It's now maybe 11 hours of video. There is no way I can do that with my machine and everything. So probably I will just upload them with a good title and a good description and but of course I know that you guys like uh, to see how I texture it so that will be the next thing to do. Um, yeah, look forward to it. Uh, I hope so. Uh, so this is really going to be some material for the internet just so that there is reference out there. I am pretty sure that n not many of my subscribers, so you basically, um, are going to watch this. But I would be happy if that was the case. Now, as for the scarf, you, you saw I just created a circle and mirrored it. And now, after activating clipping, I'm going to extrude it downwards and try to get the same shape done as here. So, over here we have a, a wrinkle because we don't have the... Um, you know, because this is going to be on the shoulder, it's kind of wrinkling up here. Then with the next extrusion, it's going to be 
uh, on the shoulder already while this one is still straight and goes down. Maybe this was a... Yeah, like this. This looks good. And we can also put a subdivision surface modifier on it and give it the white color as always. So the question is kind of how to do it because in the drawings it's just a ring and two pieces sticking out which is kind of fun because well, there is no no real that you cannot just attach a scarf like that, that's the point. Uh, I'm going to check whether we can just use solid fit to give this thickness. This time I want to do it in front of a uh, subdivision surface though to make it look smooth. So I might just do that instead of instead of extruding anything inwards or something. Just have to make sure that it really lies on top because we don't want anyone to see through the holes here. And see our laziness below. And pretty satisfied so far. Um, here we have a little bit uh, missing geometry, not enough to create all the wrinkles that I like. So I added one. Yeah, and other than that, it's pretty good. We also have kind of the same um, left area. Up here, I might do another extrusion. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, just try to get things right somehow. I'm sure you can. You'll manage somehow. I mean, it's not like it would be easy to just do exactly the same that I do, but kind of think about how wrinkles behave and look at reference images. As always, that's a good thing to do. And then you should have a good scarf. Awesome, and now uh, we have these two parts. Sorry, my microphone is kind of falling down, uh, so I fixed it. So we have two more parts here in the back to make, and I'm going to copy them from in here, separate it into a new object, and move them apart so that we have two here on the side. Um, I'm starting by just extruding it to our target location, not worrying about any curves at the beginning. Now before I subdivide it along the, in, in this direction, I want to give it a bit of a curve uh, in that way. And now I will add these kind of loops to um, basically show it the way to up here. Um, reason why I did that was basically to optimize my workflow and don't waste time on because it's easier to to adjust all these instead of making these first and then having to adjust all of the other ones since uh, we will turn it now and the direction of it will kind of change. It would have been possible with the um, shrink and fatten tool but you know why it's so difficult when it's also easy. So here we have it now just added the last loop to make it sharp um, if it's kind of too, if you see too many corners here and edges, you might want to add a few more cuts just to um, increase the resolution. Just like I did just now. 
and then here in the middle we have again one of these lines so I'm using bevel again and we'll just try to play a second material and see how thick it will be well it's kind of I can kind of accept that when we close it together that's the thinnest that we'll get but actually that is quite close to what we want anyways but it's kind of now a hard edge let's think about what we want to do um, okay so I will leave it for now but when we get to texturing I might remove it again so I hope to keep everything until then non-destructive because in texturing we might be able to replace it but uh, we still want to give ourselves the option to have everything in. So one thing I want to do now, because we're pretty far, is create a random object, add three um, material slots, or actually four just in case, then select everything, and, well, first I'll save it, then select, select everything, select the cube as, as the last object, press Control L, by the way, I'm so sorry for not displaying the keys, press Control L and select materials so that everything is again gray, and now we'll do a quick inspection on all the shapes and see if we're happy with the result or not. So this is looking pretty good. I think the scarf is a bit too um, small. I mean, you cannot really see it in the actual design. It's a bit larger. So we're going to increase the size of it a bit. Uh, now we're not di uh, distracted by all those colors. Yep. That's the number one thing to do. Everything else looks pretty good. I have nothing to complain about. Awesome. So let's undo it. Get back our color information. And start editing again. So we said we would um, move this one a little bit more up. <coughs> now you can hide her face a little bit beneath the scarf, which is kind of cool. And move this to the side. Of course the hair is now starting to be in the way, so I'm moving it a little bit so that it falls on the side next to it. With connected, you can only move the one strand that you need to move. And there we go. Now, as for this part, uh, I want to give it a sharp ending just so that we don't have any thing sticking out. This is kind of off-center, so I'm fixing that as well. And here I have the feeling that, well, we haven't moved that, so that's why I had that feeling. Should be good now. Well, I overdid it. Great. Actually, you can smooth it once and see what happens. Actually, that looks quite cool. Um, why not leave it like that? <laughs> now it's kind of too small. So actually I'm going to undo it because it would be much more effort to... Ah, oh, I can't decide, it's hard. Always these decisions. So I use the combination of smoothing and not smoothing so I didn't smooth the endings, but everything else was smooth. So that the thickness is the same still. Um, but we still have the effect that I wanted to have. Now the scarf actually also has a symbol on it, but I'm not going to, going to bother with it. Um, we could just for now 
try to create here a second loop this material yeah let's leave that but really not not this here <laughs> that is not a good idea that will be a texture and this loop will also be deleted later on this is just for the purpose of um, seeing the, those details better now as next part will be about molding boots and mm, yeah probably modeling this piece here and the pocket on the back and this thing on the arm so you know what I will definitely forget one of those I will create a new grease pencil layer and with a pretty obvious color let me mark these <laughs> because I'm definitely going to forget some and then the gun no I'm just kidding we're not going to mold the gun <laughs> that's a different thing but if this was going to be a figure I would definitely consider making it I mean just because giving her some props to hold make makes a figure a lot more interesting um, there you go, that's our figure so far. This is kind of weird, what's going on here? Let's make it a bit more cloth-like. It's probably because of the leg below. Great, be careful with things sticking out. And done. So that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Um, I hope this tutorial to, I mean, you know, this modeling to be done in about two parts. Um, that's what I try to aiming for or what my hopes are, but we'll see what it really turns out. Um, afterwards <laughs> there will be so much more to do and I'm really thinking about uh, doing those as separate tutorials because it doesn't make much sense if people don't even know that there is more information at the end uh, if it's all in this incredibly long thing uh, so I'll think about that and decide later after fixing this so have a good day and see you next time